Hey guys, what's up? I just wanted to do a quick follow-up on what we talked about the last time. Being able to edit pictures on your phone. That's just as simple as, as, as it is and as simple as I want to keep it in this particular video. Um, this also reminds me of what I talked about some years ago about how ca cameras and even cellular phones, I don't know if I talked about phones so much, but how your cell phone can actually become a workstation for you. And I see that happening now, not just with the phones, but also with the tablets. Anyway, in this particular video, I want to take a bit more time, a slower paced um, process of how I go about editing, not just in Visco Cam, not just in um, Film 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 is Born, which is a um, a plugin, a iPhone app by Mastin Labs, and not just Snapsy, but just a very a few, maybe about four different applications. How I approach the process of editing pictures. That come out of the, come out of my camera, and also what do I do in my camera before I even prepare those pictures for editing? So let's take a look at it real quick. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a screen capture from the phone, outlining the process of how you can actually control the camera mobily. You know, a lot of cameras do that now, Panasonic's and Sony's and the list goes on but just giving you an idea of what's possible so let's say I, this person person took the picture themselves not using the app the files will still be transferred as as normal to the SD card but I'm just using the app so you guys can see how the process works you take the picture take about three or four of them here and then you go right back into the app transfer the files and those files are now on your phone and you can just open up your favorite editor and begin the process. So it just gives you the flexibility to share a file or tweak something quickly if you so desire. Sometimes if you shoot the, the image right, you don't have to touch anything. Okay, this first application is called Film Born. I like to call it film is born, but it's just called film born. And I'm just going to bring this picture in here. And we're just going to do some quick editing. So I just go down to the bottom here. You first, your first row of um, your first section of categories here is the different film stocks. So you have Fuji film, which is pretty nice. Let's go through a couple of them so you can see. I'm not going to use any of them in this particular instance. And you have Ilford, which is another black and white type of film stock. Then you have Kodak. I'm not using any of these right now. The black and white looks nice, but that's not what I'm looking for. So let's play with the midtones a little bit here. These are my curves. Second category, I like your adjustments. As you can see here at the top. I'm just going to brighten it up a bit and add some warmth to the, to the image. Mm, sharpen a little bit. This is the shadow details, highlights, save my highlights a bit. And I may just crop the bottom. Let's turn this one off and go to the first one. Gives me a freeform cropping tool. And the save changes. So Film is Born is pretty good. Um, one thing I've learned about these applications is better to have an image that's pretty... Um, that has a lot of light coming in rather than something that's um, kind of dark. So say an image like this one here. Let's see. It'd be easier for you to edit this picture because it's evenly lit and the, the film stock will look a lot better. I'll just darken it a bit to show you guys how it would look. Play with the contrast a bit add a little bit of saturation and I'm pretty much done with this picture oh sorry wrong button here it is that's it so going from the original looks a bit you know flat which is good sometimes you want your image to be flat so you can play with it and then go into a more saturated look so film is born is pretty good like I said if the image is properly lit you'll get more 
will have more control. And that's with any, most pictures, unless the picture is raw and you have a excellent photo editing software, then you'll get more control with that as well. So that's Film is Born. Right now, let me try Snapseed. Now, this picture is not the favorite here, but again, this is a quick example of what you can do straight out of camera on your phone. And as you can see, this is the iPhone. This is the iPhone 7 here. You can see it's it's not. It doesn't take long. I think Snapseed does a better job actually than most of the other applications. See, there's more information now. You can see more of my face. So this is kind of the reason I like Snapseed. Now, someone mentioned on the on the on my. YouTube, why am I not using Lightroom Mobile? Maybe I will, maybe I won't. We'll see what happens there. Haven't used Curves yet. I think Snapseed seems to be doing the best so far. Before, it looks a little bit blue, which is cool for um, for the, the camera's done it itself. Let me try, let me try um, Curves here a little bit. Too strong. About right there. So the idea is I want to give it some color, some brightness on the other eye, and some saturation. And that's pretty much what I would do with this picture. So let's open another picture here. Let's go with mm, something different. Let's go with this one here, black and white. So like I said, so far Snapseed seems to be doing the best job. I'm just going to go through this one really quickly. Not a whole lot of conversation. What I'm doing is I'm trying to create a more of a silhouette look. This ambient effect here in Snapseed is pretty helpful because it's, it's almost like it's a um, a light. In, in, in Lightroom, you have an option called light, you have contrast, sorry, you have exposure, you have brightness, and there's something called lights. I feel like this is what this actually works on is the lights in the image. So it brings light, it brings brightness to areas that have light, so to speak, instead of brightening the whole image, including the dark areas. Um, I think that, yeah, I think Snapseed is doing a good job, personally. I'm just trying to remember how to, I think I have to use two fingers here. Yes. As you guys can see, I get more saturation, I mean, more darkness on me. So you basically pinch in with two fingers for this particular section here. And that's what I would do with that picture. It's pretty simple. Okay, so this is Vis Visco Cam or Vis V S C O Cam, however you guys like to pronounce it. And essentially, I'm bringing one of my pictures in here, and I'm looking at first. First of all, I have to know what I want out of the picture. So right now, you see me changing the temperature of the image because I'm looking to bring out some more skin tones. Now that's because I'm using a particular filter, but if I was doing it by if I was ed editing this picture from scratch without any filters, I would do the same thing. Um, this crop did not work, so I'm definitely not going to go with that. I'm going to try something else. Now, more than likely, this crop is going to have to come from the top. Crop on the bottom is not helping so much. As you can see, too much of the content is being lost because obviously the person in the picture is what I'm focusing on primarily so cropping the top would work a lot better than cropping the bottom anyway this is available in most of these software applications um, I'm trying to bring another picture in here let's see this picture is a bit has a bit more of a, a bluish tint. I believe I used the classic chrome from the camera to achieve this particular look. But as you can see, the left side of my, the right side of my face is really blown out. So I'm attempting to use a filter here to add some warmth to the image. I don't, I don't want it so obvious. The thing about most media, particularly with we're talking about pictures here is to make sure that whatever you're creating in post is not detectable. It should look natural. It should look as if nothing was done. But obviously there was something done, but people don't have to know that. Um, so here I'm cropping, trying to eliminate some of the 
other elements of the image that I do not need. By bringing my picture closer, part of my eyes cut out here. I'm going to have to go up a little bit higher on that. Just about right there. That should do it. But the key is we want to focus on the subject. You want to give the subject, obviously, a believable look. But you also want to think about what it is that you're trying to achieve. So here I'm adding some warmth to the image. Even though it's blue, I still want to maintain flesh tones. I don't want my skin to look um, abnormal or strange. Let's find another picture here. Let's see. So this picture has been edited before. And the good thing about Visco Cam is that once you bring your picture back in that's been stored in the catalog, you see the filter you've applied. You can actually turn it off. Or this is the this is the base picture here. You can turn it off or you can change it to another filter. So this is the base. This is what the picture was looked like when it was shot. I believe on the Fuji camera this was shot at the standard color. Let's see here. So now you see a black and white filter, uh, a bit of more of a gruesome look. I'm, I'm looking for more of a cold look in this particular image, like something like this here. Um, that's too dark. You want to maintain some of the shadow details. You don't want to lose everything in the dark areas. You want to maintain some of it. And so I'm looking for something that's going to give me a balance. Now, the thing about filters, everyone goes crazy with filters. Um, however, you don't need filters in order to achieve a particular look. You can do it yourself. They may help save some time, but sometimes it's really good. Most times, I should say, it's really good to do a lot of this on your own. So even though the filters are here, I'm always dialing, dialing back on the effect, and I'm adding my own specific look to the image. So Fisco is not just a filter application. It also has contrast levels brightness, crop, shadow recovery, highlight recovery. You can even add noise to the image. You can add saturation. So right here, I'm bringing up the shadow detail. This is the shadow recovery. So as you can see, it looks really washed out. But I just want to add a little bit more of a softness to the shadow areas, to the dark areas. Um, And I want to bring down the brightness a little bit so it's not so um, washed out. So what are the shadows? So a lot of these things, a lot of these applications, it's a, it's a matter of give and take. Same thing with photography. You shoot a bit underexposed in your, with, your, with your shutter speed being set high, but then you lower your aperture so you bring in more light. So the shutter gives you more speed and it also darkens the image but then you add back some of what you've taken away by going to your aperture. And that's basically what edit editing is. When you edit a picture, you're actually bringing down maybe highlights, maintaining your blacks, raising your shadows. You're just constantly going back and forth until you get the look that you want. And that's really it. Thanks guys for watching this video. Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully the information was informative. It was helpful. If it was informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If not, leave a comment below. I can work on it, work on improving the next time. Purpose of these videos are actually to help benefit those who are either on their way up learning this technology, or if I'm no longer available to give the information, at least these, these videos have been documented and you guys can go back and watch it and learn something years from now, months from now, whenever you guys watch this video, you'll be able to learn some skills when it, as, it, as it applies to photography and telling your story. So this is Seawall here from Seawall Classes. Until next time, peace.